Howdy, welcome to Jank Brews. Today we've got a pretty janky brew <clears throat> that we're calling Bant Rebirth, uh, focused on a bunch of legends uh, in the form of Titania, Slogurk, Shauna. We've got a Malcolm in here, we've got Rona. Uh, so let's get into it. This deck uh, most often wins, if it, if it gets there at all, uh, via Titania, Gaia, Incarnate. We've got three copies of Titania, Voice of Gaia in the deck, which uh, pairs well with a handful of the things we're trying to do. Um, it's a 3-4, four, 4-3 four, with reach, and whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, we gain two life. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four or more land cards in your graveyard and you both own and control Titania, Voice of Gaia, and a land named Argos, Sanctum of Nature, exile then meld them into Titania, Gaia, Incarnate. So what we want to have is a whole bunch of lands in our graveyard, uh, with Argoth, Sanctum of Nature, on the battlefield. And uh, yeah, turn Titania into Gaia Incarnate and Bash for the win. Uh, there's a couple of cards we, we could, in fact, I, I've toyed with playing in uh, variations of this deck. There's the Tortoise that dumps lands into the graveyard and lets you bring one back. Uh, arguably, that's better than Shauna. Um, but I have some curiosity about Shauna and... Yeah, I don't know. This is Jank Brew, so sometimes we play suboptimal cards for the exploratory value. Um, but you may want to consider that guy. Uh, you also may want to consider Sarah Paragon in that it can replay any of these guys from the yard. Um, so we're going to do a lot of self-mill, a lot of draw and discard, but we'll, we'll run through the rest of the creatures first. So we have a pair of Aether Channelers. This is another card that could arguably something be something else, but it's been interesting this far. Uh, I, I like this card. It's sort of a pet card of mine. Um, gives us options. Uh, it's a 2-1 that can bounce any non-land permanent, which is convenient. Draw a card or create a bird token, which we'd often be using as a chump blocker. We've got Slogurk, the Overslime. Uh, Slogurk is a 3-3 three, three for 3 with Trample. When a land card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Slogurk, the Overslime. Remove 3, return it to its owner's hand. And Slogurk leaves the battlefield, return up to three target land cards from your graveyard to your hand. So this is uh, just as convenient a way um, as the Tortoise to get uh, an Argoth back in play if we happen to have dumped it into the graveyard. It also lets us uh, get back Beseju, Odawara, Soaring City, and Iganjo if we've used them uh, for their, their channel abilities. And... Yeah, sometimes it can just get big. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on the ways that we can, at instant speed, put a bunch of lands in the graveyard and Grom. Um, we've got uh, two copies of Shauna, Purifying Blade. Um, a lot of our abilities, uh, either triggered abilities or, or spells that we cast, uh, gain us a little bit of life, even some of our lands. Uh, so being able to get a bit of card advantage off of Shauna, I think, is interesting. Perhaps should be something else, but it works well with our Cosmic Rebirth, which we'll touch on in just a minute, <clears throat> in that we can target it if we need to. Uh, and Cosmic Rebirth, of course, also gains some life. So uh, Shauna is a 3-3 three, three life linker for 3. At the beginning of your end step, you can pay X. If you do draw X cards, X can't be greater than the amount of life you gain this turn. Um, we'll touch then on Malcolm, a luring scoundrel. This guy's got flash. He's a 2-1. He also lets us loot, uh, draw a discard when he uh, connects with an opponent. Um, draw a discard. If there are four or more chorus counters on Malcolm, you may cast the discarded card without paying its mana cost. Pretty uncommon that we're going to have that happen, but you never know. We've got two copies of Oracle of Tragedy. Uh, I, I sort of not advise cutting this card, uh, even though it may seem a little weaker than some of the alternatives in Legends. Not just because uh, Oracle's not legendary, uh, but because it has a unique uh, combo with Cosmic Rebirth, right? So uh, when it enters the battlefield or dies, you can draw a card, then discard a card, or you can shuffle up to four target mana uh, cards with mana value three or greater from your graveyard into your library. So when testing this deck earlier, um, twice uh, I was milled out. Um, once by a bug combo that just kept recasting um, I don't know, the seven mana uh, black sorcery that mills ten of each player and then dumps it in the grave. So basically th that player milled both of us. Uh, but because I was holding a Cosmic Rebirth, and I'll often be holding a, a late Cosmic Rebirth, this is typically the one thing you don't want to dump into your graveyard if you can, and if you have to, Oracle of Tragedy can get them back. Um, so Cosmic Rebirth uh, allowed me to, at their end step, um, or even in my upkeep, if I didn't have the mana available, I can Cosmic Rebirth the Oracle of Tragedy and put three cards from my graveyard into my deck 
thus preventing me from being milled. In the, in the case of that uh, black sorcery mill, like my opponent just lost the next turn, even though they milled both of us out um, because they didn't have a way to refill their uh, library. Um, also, in the case of just a regular blue-white mill deck, I got milled out. They said GG's. Uh, I was able to replay uh, Oracle of Tragedy, put some cards back in my death deck, and therefore be able to Titania them to death. Uh, so don't recommend cutting Oracle of Tragedy just because it gives you late game plans. Sometimes like games are just going really late. This, this deck doesn't win very easily, very well. Um, so typically the games are long. Uh, we've got two copies of Rona, Herald of Invasion. It, it draws and discards at instant speed. Um, it's legendary spell, untap Rona, Herald of Invasion. Happens reasonably often when you got Malcolm and Titania and Slogurk and Shauna. Uh, so worthy of a couple slots there, I think. Um, I would cut this before I'd cut Oracle of Tragedy. Then uh, we'll move on to the sort of namesake card in Rebirth. Uh, Cosmic Rebirth is an instant for three. Choose target permanent card in your graveyard. If that if it has mana value three or less, you can put it onto the battlefield. If you don't put it on the battlefield, put it into your hand. You gain three life. Obviously, this is a pretty cool cop, uh, combo with Shauna. You have to do this on your turn if you want to uh, gain the, the life uh, on your turn and thereby at the beginning of your end step be able to draw some cards but sometimes that's totally fine if you just want to like I don't know put three more cards in your hand if you've got six mana which is very common if you don't die in the early stage um, so Cosmic Rebirth is really what we, what we want to be doing here and in order to set up Cosmic Rebirth we play four copies of Faithful Mending great thing to just dump into your yard with other Faithful Mendings or with draw and discard abilities um, and gain us a little bit of life. So again, with Shauna in play, the Faithful Mending could easily, with two extra mana, draw two cards. And um, we've got full four copies of Otherworldly Gaze. Both of these cards, it's also worth noting, um, let us find our Argoths, uh, let us dump lands at instant speed to Slogurk, uh, and really just set up our combos with Cosmic Rebirth. In a perfect world, what we want to be doing is at the end of our opponent's turn, uh, flash in a Titania where we have everything set up and then bam, they get hit for 15 uh, when they weren't expecting it. So other than that, we're playing four copies of Confounding Riddle, which is another way of setting up our combos, looking for the cards that we want, filling our graveyard with the things that we want to have there. Um, and it, it's also like a nice little counter spell for big things we can't otherwise deal with. Um, and we generally, uh, we don't play any removal other than Depopulates, might seem a little counterintuitive considering we'd be blowing up our own stuff, but we're blowing up our own stuff all the time anyway. So if, if, our, if their graveyard's full of creatures and our graveyard's full of creatures, usually we're in better shape because we have combos to pull off with that. And unless we're playing against a reanimator deck, usually they don't. Um, so if we can if we can resolve a depopulate against you know these uh, war leaders call decks or uh, any sort of mid range deck. Um, and, and potentially recast them over and over again, because Oracle of Tragedy, uh, sometimes we'll put more of these back in our deck. If we if we need more than three to populate, uh, we'll, we'll find ways to get them back. The mana for this deck is super janky. We've, we've got three copies of Argoth and a three-color deck, which comes into play tapped unless we have a green uh, a legendary creature, um, which we don't have terribly often. <laughs> I think we're playing eight total copies of that. Um, we've got two planes, two islands, and a forest. All of those intended to be hit off of Broker's Hideout because Broker's Hideout works well with Titania. It lets us uh, gain a life and draw a card. Uh, well, works well with Slogurk um, in that it triggers when it enters the graveyard. Uh, most of the rest of this is just uh, uh, dual lands. And it's questionable whether we should be playing any of the fast lands. Um, I think... Uh, Arguably, we should be playing none of them. Um, I haven't really done the math on these, but currently we're playing three fast lands. I think Razor Verge Thicket and Seacrum Coast. We've got two pairs, of, or two two copies of Restless Mindstalk, uh, and two copies of Restless Anchorage. These are great cards to like bring back off of Slowgurk. Um, it's fine if they die because again, Slowgurk can bring them back. Um, but they're good at bashing a little bit of points of damage um, when the opponent's not expecting it. In a perfect world, you want to get your opponent down to like I don't know. 12 or so, so you have the opportunity to just Titania them in one fell swoop. Um, Titania can get really big later in the game, like, you know, 15, 16, 17, but um, in most cases, when we're flipping her, she's in that, you know, 10, 10, 12, 12 range, so uh, that's a pretty long um, deck tech, but this is a pretty janky deck. I think it needs a bit of explanation, so let's see how many games we can get through here. <laughs> 